What's going on you guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Darian with Darian the Dev and in this video we're going to talk about five reasons why you should use GitLab over GitHub. If you guys are brand new to my channel, if you're into tech, entrepreneurship, coding, startups, anything like that, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. That's all we talk about here on this channel. All right, guys, so in this video, I just wanted to quickly go over five reasons why I've been getting into GitLab over GitHub and why I think it's a great tool to learn how to use for version control on top of GitHub if you're already playing around with that or if you've already been exposed to GitHub. For anybody that doesn't know, version control is basically just a way that developers are able to manage like all their changes when they're working together on a project. So when you're changing like a certain file that somebody else isn't changing the same exact file, or if you do, what happens if you change the same file that somebody else changed? You know, what happens if you lose all your code or how do multiple people from all over the world work on the same code base, right? So the answer to all those questions kind of comes down to version control. So for the most part, all version control tools do similar things, but some have, you know, more tools and features than others. And so in this one, guys, I want to share with you the difference between GitHub and GitLab and why I'm getting into GitLab a little bit more and why I think it's a great tool going forward for anybody in 2020 who's going through a coding bootcamp or teaching themselves how to code or just trying to become a full stack software developer, um, you should really think about learning GitLab or getting into using GitLab for your version control. The first reason I like GitLab is because like GitHub, it also allows you to have unlimited public and private repositories. So I know you guys out there who are already familiar with GitHub are probably like, oh, that's not really a big deal. You can have unlimited public and private repositories on GitHub as well too. I'm just making this point to let you guys know that there's basically no difference in the free tier. So for the most part, you can do all the same things in the free tier of GitHub as you can in the free tier of GitLab in terms of creating as many projects as you want. It's not like GitLab is gonna charge you to create a certain number of private repositories and GitHub doesn't. The second reason why I'm starting to lean towards GitLab is because GitLab allows you to easily work with CI CD pipelines because that's basically the main difference between GitLab and GitHub. So where GitHub is a tool for version control, like we mentioned before, you can do all the cool things. And I'm not even gonna say I know all the features of GitHub, but there's a bunch of things like webhooks and you can add other services into your repository. So if you wanna add like Travis CI or um, if you want to add something like, uh, you know, Twilio or, um, you know, Slack, um, all these different like webhooks have integrations that you can connect to GitHub. And then if somebody like commits to a repository, you can have like a text message sent to someone or you can have a Slack message, you know, auto generated into a Slack group or something like that. So there's a bunch of cool features and things that you can do with github and it's really extensible however it's not really intuitive or like easily configurable inside the gui so or the graphical user interface so the the actual website where you go in and use the dashboard it's not really clear there exactly how to do a lot of the cool things that GitHub allows you to do. And when you're first getting started, at least for me, a lot of GitHub was just trying to figure out how do I manage version control? How do I push things? How do I make branches? How do I you know, merge conflicts? How do I use the diff checker? How do I collaborate with other people? So it wasn't so much like trying to figure out all the tools that GitHub had to offer as much as it was just trying to figure out version control itself. That's speaking from my personal experience. Whereas with GitLab, all the tools that you need to pretty much fulfill the entire SDLC or software development lifecycle. So everything from the version control all the way through the CICD pipeline and all the way through the deployment is all easily manageable right there inside the GUI for GitLab. So GitLab is meant to allow you to easily configure CICD pipelines, especially if you're not good at doing it yourself or like writing pipelines from scratch. There's a bunch of these different templates and stuff that you can use right within the GUI on GitLab to allow you to pretty much use whatever language you're you know, using and generate a, a generic or a basic CI CD script using Docker or whatever database you want, um, deploy it to Heroku, AWS, like all that stuff is auto generated inside the CI CD script for you. And I think that helps a lot with just helping at least newer people to CICD and DevOps like myself um, just get an understanding of like a baseline of what needs to be in the script and then you can go configure it and add like what you need to add or take away what you don't need. I kind of you know spilled over into my third point which is this, the seamless integration with the CI um, and the CD so again just the ability to just configure those files right within GitLab makes it 
really easy to get started and then you know go do your own research on what you need to do to configure your your actual script to get it to work so number four kind of piggybacks off two and three which is basically just getting more devops experience and exposure again guys like software developer is one role within tech there's so many different roles um you guys can check out my video about roles in tech where i do like a breakdown or like a high overview of what each role kind of consists of but there's a lot of roles outside of just software engineering or software developer, front end, back end, whatever. There's like site reliability engineer, there's release engineers, there's DevOps engineers. So there's all these different roles that specifically deal with the CI CD pipeline and specifically deal with Docker and Docker images and Heroku and AWS and Azure and just deploying things to cloud services usually. That entire process itself is a career field. You know, you can get certified in Azure, in AWS. Um, you can learn Jenkins, Travis CI, um, Circle CI. You can learn all the different CI tools. You can get experience with all of them. Um, and again, you can use either GitHub or GitLab to do that. But again, like GitLab gives you pretty much a, a boiler, boiler, GitLab pretty much gives you a boilerplate where you can go in and start configuring those other services where you can spend more time learning that service, Circle CI, Travis CI, or whatever it is, um, and less time on how to actually write the script itself. And I think it's really cool that GitLab kind of is there for that specific purpose because it allows you to get way more reps with deployments and stuff when you're not spending so much time struggling through the errors of like actually writing the CI CD script. So the last big reason guys that I recommend getting into GitLab or just trying it out um, for a few projects or something like that is that there's really no changes to the commands you're used to when you're using GitHub. So when you're actually committing your project to the repository, there's gonna be absolutely, basically no changes to the commands you use in the terminal to commit your files. So you're still gonna use, you know, git init, git add, uh, git commit, and git push all that stuff is going to be exactly the same so there's no real learning curve to using gitlab other than just learning how to use the gui and set up the ci cd pipelines and everything which is specifically what it's for and it's very intuitive it's all built into the platform so um i highly recommend just checking it out i am paying like i think four or seven bucks a month or something like that for github um i don't know which account i have but it's the like one of the smaller tiers of github i actually don't even know why i pay for it guys um i bought it a while ago and just haven't taken it off my debit card but um, either way, they're both really great services for version control. I highly recommend anybody who's teaching themselves to learn how to code or go into a coding bootcamp. Check out one or both of these services. You're definitely going to need to use one of them, but um, maybe start with GitHub if you've never used Git version control at all before. This is really great for absolute beginners. Like I said, teaching yourselves to code or going to coding bootcamp, never done any version control or any coding before. Or if you want to get into open source projects, a lot of that stuff is on GitHub. So that'd be a great place to start there. But at the same time, if you've already used GitHub a little bit and you're already a little bit familiar with committing things to GitHub and everything, maybe venture out and try something new with GitLab and check it out and see if you guys can set up a CI CD pipeline using that. Um, if you guys have used some other version control software or whatever your experience with version control is, like what are some pain points you guys have with the version control that you use? What do you not like about it? What do you like about it? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Let's talk about some version control stuff and just help share ideas and other tools and help other people get better who are here watching these videos as well. And also, if you guys are brand new to coding or if you're thinking about going to a coding bootcamp, check out the description box down below where I'm giving away my free intro to coding bootcamp. Of course, it has everything in it that I wish I would have known going into coding bootcamp. So it really pretty much helps you guys get a project up off the ground, front end and back end, and just teaches you the basics so that when you first get to coding bootcamp, you'll kind of already have a good foundation. Also in the description box, there's a link to the private Facebook group where I add all the additional resources that I don't share in the descriptions of these videos. So again, guys, this is Darian with Darian the Dev. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. We're almost at 500 subscribers, which I can't believe. I'm super excited about that. Thank you guys so much for all the support, and I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Peace.